Hello everyone, welcome to this special edition of Sailing Rum Punch. Sorry to interrupt your week with this episode. I just want to use this opportunity to show you around what we've got so far, what our plans are, and what we hope it's going to look like in the end. So stick around, it's very chatty. If you like what you see, please comment. If you've got any ideas, let us know. Um, this is still very much an open book kind of design where we're kind of making it up as we go along. So please, we've had some really helpful comments so far. So please keep those coming. Uh, let us know what you think and enjoy it. What I've been working on is just the saloon kind of area from the companionway to the forward bulkhead. All this area has been taken out and then I've kind of put back a little skeletal structure of what we think it's going to be like. We want to be able to walk around as it is now and feel like, okay, walking down, we're going to need a handle here. We're going to need this here. I want to sit here. I feel like the angle on the sofa and things. Everything's fully adaptable at the moment, which is really important. I'm not an expert in any of these things. So I know we are putting drawers in. Drawers need to be exact measurements. And I know at the moment where I've built the galley, for example, it's not quite there, but it means I can build the drawers, put them in, and I can move the side supports around to make it fit. And then we'll start having things in once we know they're in. Just making everything as easy as I can for me, it will amount to more work, but I think to get it right, it's definitely worth it. Let's go around the boat and I'll show you what we've got. Things are actually flying here. Really happy with the way we're going. We have got most of the structure for the saloon Gary Nav area in, so we can start to get a feel for what it's gonna be like. And there's just a few adjustments we need to make. That's what I'm gonna be doing over the next couple of days. I'm really happy with what we've got. What I'm gonna do now is just do a quick recap of what we've done. So starting in the galley area, the sink area looks great. It's very well supported with the two by two and the two by one. That's all screwed in now. It's got lovely straight edges. Super happy with that. The sink is very well supported. I might even add some more in there um, at some point, but for now it's really good. The worktop's in, that's got an extra adjustment. It's got another supported batten against the hull now as well. So bringing that side up, which made a big difference. It's got its new um, bulkheady side piece as well so that we can get some drawers in here and um, the good thing is that I haven't tabbed anything in and I won't until the drawers are in because this is all fully adjustable in the time being so next steps on here I've got this bit of 9mm ply I'm going to create a fascia here so I'm going to cover this up what's going to happen inside here is we're going to have a freezer tucked in at the end access from the top we're going to have a fridge inside here again access from the top but there's going to be the fridge is going to be up against here so we've got this two by two here so there's going to be a two inch gap that goes all the way down here in front of the fridge that's going to be uh we're going to put a little cupboard door here we want to use every bit of space so this section here is going to be a thin two inch shelf or 44 mil i think this wood is so that's going to come down here so we'll have a little bit of shelf enough for spice jars and little things like that so we can at least use that bit of space there also i've done the toe kick down here so that's going to extend that's going to come all around here so i'm going to knock i'm going to knock it out of here and then again it'll be taken out of here as well with a nice supportive batten down there so we're still not 100% decided on what we want to do for the worktop. We are looking at compact laminate like Formica, something like that. They've got really good patterns. It's really durable. We know that we can put it through its paces and not have to worry too much about it. Wood is another idea. There's loads of different wooden worktops. It's a really cost effective option. We've seen loads of scraps um, that would be perfect for us, but we just know how, especially we are in the kitchen, we like to cook. It's going to be quite messy. We're expecting a few spillages and we know that coming back to work surface like that is going to take some sanding and refinishing every now and again. That's something we can be doing with, you know, it, it's cost effective, it's a bit more work for us, but it might be the option that we take. If we do go down that route, then we can look at pairing the worktop with the top of the nav table as well to tie those in together. That might be another cost effective way to look at the nav table top as well, because we're still, we're still wondering what to do with that, but we'll get to that. Uh, in the drawers, we're going to have potentially, it's going to be a cutlery drawer, like a utensils drawer, and then a pan drawer. We've got, we know what pans we have, so we know what size we need to fit. So it'll probably be a really big drawer at the bottom. They are going to be very heavy duty drawer sliders. They're going to be quite stiff and they're going to lock because I know no matter what the kind of sliders and what locks you have, we have very reliable information from friends that have 
had this on their boats as well and they're like it doesn't matter what the locking mechanism is on the drawer a wave will de-seat that so it would be good to steer away from the drawers but we still think we want them so we are going to ignore all the good advice we have from our friends and we're going to just go for it and just make it completely foolproof hopefully and have a really good locker mechanism having all that information is good because we know that we can do something even if it's a massive dead bolt whatever we have to do we'll lock it in place also shelving on the top that's something we're also still coming to terms with still having a look about what we're going to do with that um, so that's still to come there's still a lot of repair work on the fiberglass i want to change out all the pipes there's, there's a lot of repair work this is it's, it should be quite an easy fix but we just need to get the inside to get access to the fiberglass that needs repairing here i need to get into the port side uh, cockpit locker that's currently absolutely full um, so now we've had a good tidy of the workshop we're going to now just cram it full of more stuff from the boat so it's full of fenders lines um, we've it's actually full of diesel at the moment it's got all the diesel that we pulled out of the diesel tank so once that's gone I'm also going to pull out the diesel tank um, with so that we can replace it with whatever we need to um, I need to get in there, there's loads of spilled diesel and I just need to get all that, clear it, sand all the wood back and repaint everything in there as well. So that'd be a good job to do. Yeah, so then while I'm in that locker, I'll have access to the back of here so that I can get really get involved and cover that all up. Um, the big hole was cut there so we could run gas lines through it. We're not going to have any gas coming through the boat. So we have absolutely no need for access here. One thing it is good for is getting a little bit of airflow. So there is another hole at the top. So we're going to put in a vent so we do get some airflow from that locker. We're gonna have quite a few actually. There's quite a few little places where we're gonna put fans. We want lots of air circulation in the boat to prevent mold and condensation and things like that. So that is definitely on the forefront of our mind. Gimbaled oven, very happy with the gimbaled oven. I have yet to bring the oven and the induction hob down to do a test fit, to see how it is. It might be absolutely useless, but it looks good. Yeah, really happy with that. I've since clad out the back of it as well. So it's got the nice angles so that we can start putting shelving and storage behind it as well. And then, so it's just going to be ready for having worktop around it. So whatever we do use for the top, for the worktops, we are going to put around the top of the gimbal box and then on the shelf behind it as well. There will be a cutout so we can access all our olive oils and our balsamic vinegars, which are gonna be stored behind there. That's the size I'm using to go for it. So that's what's gonna be in there. Um, and then we've got shelving above that as well. This'll be worktop, this'll be worktop, um, and that'll sit back here. So there will be a little cutout back here. Um, well, probably in the center here for us to get the things out of here. And then there's gonna be shelving back here and there'll be a little tray back here with things on it. Things in the cupboard here, so lots and lots of storage. We do have an awful lot of kitchen equipment and utensils, we use a lot of spices and ingredients in our cooking, so it's, it was really important to have the space to keep those in. Uh, we have bought a load of storage jars, which we're basically going to base all our sizes of our cupboards around, because we're gonna use, we're gonna try not to have lots of packets on board and things so we want to try and be as sustainable as possible so all pasta and any kind of grains like that are going to live in storage jars but it's much better for it to be airtight and keep moisture out as well but it does give us something to base on the standard size kind of jars so that we know once the jars break or anything even though they're not glass so they shouldn't break that we can just get new ones and replace them. Underneath the gimbal stove, I have a shelf and then underneath there is gonna be more storage. Oven trays, whatever we want in there. Where I've put the hatch at the moment, under the gimbal cooker, it's not in a good place. It's gonna be visible. It's gonna be covered with the actual flooring we have. So I am gonna to need to reseal that and move it back because uh, I'll still want access underneath there. Um, whatever we do have under there, it'll, it hopefully won't be something that we need constant access to because it is gonna to have to be a take whatever's out from inside the cupboard to then take the hatch off to then get under the, underneath it. Hopefully we won't have to do that too much. So the port side seating area, now this is, I'm really excited about this area. This has been, this has stumped us for about a year. We've not really known anything else. We've had an idea with the rest of the boat pretty much, but this area we just didn't know what to do with. We knew we wanted to extend the galley so we knew it wouldn't be able to become a berth. 
Um, we were thinking of having a chair in there and then some storage at the end, but then it just seems weird to have a one person seat on this side. So we finally settled on it being a basically half size sofa. You'd be able to sit one person, potentially two people in there comfortably, and one person sitting up but with legs out. It's more like a chaise long, and we're really happy with this. It's gonna look exactly the same as the starboard side one. It's not gonna be pull out or anything. It's just gonna have lots and lots of storage underneath it. And then very excitingly, at the end of the sofa, we're gonna have a wood burning stove. We're having a custom one made for us. There'll be more details on that coming up soon. It's a really exciting project and I can't wait to get it in and up. Because, because of the type of sailing we wanna do, we are gonna be sailing in the winter. We wanna explore the northern climate, so we need to have a really decent heat source. And we know, having a wood burner at home, we know how great they are and we know how well it will do in a well insulated boat as well. Really looking forward to share, sharing that with you once we're a bit further along with that. Other than that, lots of storage behind, lots of storage underneath. The wood burner is gonna be mounted on the bulkhead and not low down because where we're gonna sit on the chaise long, it's gonna be above our feet so we can sit with our feet underneath um, the wood burner and it's gonna be super cozy and we're gonna be constantly fighting over who sits in that seat. Ellie, it will be you. I never win a fight. Little adjustments that need to happen here. I've used, if you remember, if you cast your mind back to when I first put the um, flooring in at the bottom on the sides, they weren't quite long enough and they didn't quite go to the hull. And they're not supposed to go all the way to the hull, but there was about a, there was nearly an inch of gap and it just wasn't good enough. So I replaced those, they, that went really well. I kept the, old floor pieces because I knew they'd come in handy at some point and this is where they've come in for the shelves at the back of the sofa because they've got that curve in it already they're pretty much ready to go I just had to slightly alter them I've already done it on the starboard side um, and that's good enough <laughs> with a bit of fiberglass and a bit of TLC that'll be perfect and the same on the port side I've cut one down and that is good to go as well I just need to install that once we're there, I just need to cut out some hatches so that we can get to the storage, so we can get storage underneath the seat and also behind the seat. Every scrap of space, I'm not joking, any little bit of space we have in this boat, we are gonna fill with something useful. Um, it's really important that we have this. This is our home, like we've got lots of stuff so we need to be able to store it and we need plenty of places to store our wine, of which there'll be many bottles. I haven't actually done much work on the starboard seats recently there is still a lot of work to be done it's there the shape is there it is cut down now and we, we've worked out what cushions we need to go on it it's going to be we're going to be ordering the foam soon ellie's going to be making custom covers for it we're, in, we're talking to some fabric manufacturers and hopefully getting some patterns with Ellie's colour scheme in mind, um, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. It's going to look incredible in here. I've never personally cut out a flat or anything like this design-wise. It's stressful and Ellie is exceptional at this, so I'm really happy that she's taken the lead because colours and clashing I don't really know much about. Probably, you can probably tell actually, these probably don't go together, but who wears orange? Don't put that in. The back of the seat is the same size as the pullout. So the cushion that's gonna be on the back of the sofa is gonna go into the pullout of the sofa so we can turn that into a bed. Very clever, that's all me. Uh, again, hatches in the forward seat, hatches in the seat backs. Uh, the bulkhead behind, we're gonna put some acoustic panels on there because I think they just look absolutely fantastic. A lot of people are doing it now. They're very affordable and I think it's gonna just make the place look really well. The side of the boat, we're gonna have a lot of open storage. On the hull is gonna be some insulation and then to hide that insulation, we can just use these panels where there aren't covered doors and stuff. And I just think that's gonna look great where you can just see the acoustic panels behind um, all our bits on our shelves. And then at the, um, 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 uh, and on the forward behind the seat is very thin behind the forward seat. It's just got a bit of wood that's angled so slightly. So we've just literally just got millimeters of space behind, but it is enough for a little row of LEDs. So we're going to up light the panels uh, at the forward end. And that's going to probably be one of the main sources of lighting in the boat. We think we're going to probably go away from overhead lighting. I think we can do a lot better at the moment because of the way the headliner is, we don't have a removable headliner, it's all molded in. All the cabling for the lights is molded and fiberglassed in everywhere. 
We can hopefully use some of the cables that are still in. If they're still good to go, well, I'll have those checked over by someone who knows what they're talking about to see if they are still usable. And if they are, then we'll definitely continue to use those and I'll be able to get some cool, funky lights. Uh, we have some reading lights on either side, so I can hopefully use those cables and just run LED strips down. That would be a good source of lighting. And we might get some other um, cool little lighting features as well. All multi-color changeable, so we can go reds at nighttime as well. So the main lighting will be under the side decks and then on the floor as well, we'll have some lighting strips as well. Nav area. This is one of the, this, I kind of threw this together in a couple of days and it's, it's really simple but really effective. You'll be sitting on the nav table from one of the seats from the, on the end of the sofa and on the other side from the end of the pilot berth. So together Ellie and I can both sit on there and work because Ellie's going to be doing all that editing and everything on board. So we need a monitor to work on. It's also going to act as our TV. So we're going to have that on a bracket that can just move around and it can, we can pull it out, point at the sofa when we're sat on the sofa to watch TV or we can put it, push it right back so Ellie can edit it on the nav table. So that's good too. Plenty to be getting on with. Really happy with where we are and I just can't wait. There's just not enough hours in the day really to carry on doing it. I think Ellie's back to work again soon. So I won't be tempted to stay at home and hang out with her. I will be down here early every day. I hope you like what you see. As I said before, please get in touch with your tips and tricks, things that you think might work, things that you think won't work. Like we take everything on board. One really important thing that we haven't started working on yet that I really need to, and that's the heads. It's such a small space and man, I am struggling in there. When we first bought the boat, the layout was they did the best with the layout, I think. It had a slide out sink and the shower head plugged into a tap that kind of went over it. It was all very mechanical. It was so stiff and it just, it was just horrible. We want a standalone area. It's very difficult, but we're happy with a very small sink. If anyone's got any ideas of how we can transform that tiny, tiny space into working heads, then please let us know. Um, if you need measurements, I'll provide them. You can go, you can be the first to use the toilet. That's my treat to you. So please comment, email, let us know your thoughts um, and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>